Okay, Gauss's Law and Concentric Shells, Part 2. Okay, uh, what I was making the point of in the last video is that if this is charged Q, then um, this has to, then um, this is going to need to be charged negative Q. And here's the argument for that. If I, again, the, the, the argument for that, this has to be a, the same charge, but in the, um, but a opposite sign. And here's why, because you see this metal here, if I drew a Gaussian surface in here, see that Gaussian surface? There's no flux through there because uh, metals never have electric field inside them. And so there's no flux there. There can't be because this, this equation, if there's no field, you can't have a flux through that, through that Gaussian surface. So that has to equal zero. But then that means that our other equation, the Q enclosed by the Gaussian surface, this Q enclosed must be zero. And so if there's a Q there, there must be a negative Q there to give you no net charge. And so that's how you do that. Now, um, sometimes they'll ask you what the net charge is on, um, say, the inner, the inside surface. Well, the inside surface um, right here, the net, the net charge... Uh, excuse me, the charge density, sigma. Sigma is the charge per area. And if they wanted to know the, the sigma on the inner surface, it's going to equal negative Q over this area in here. So that area is um, 4 pi b squared. That's the area of a sphere. So it's negative Q divided by 4 pi b squared. So that's what the sigma is of that. Um, the outer surface, since it was grounded, it has no, the outer surface has no um, uh, sigma at all. It has no charge density at all. Okay. Um, if I were going to graph the electric field then of, of this whole thing, if I were going to graph it, it might look something like this. Um, let's go with um, A, B, C. Okay, the electric field inside this metal is zero. But then here it's going to behave like a point charge. In here it's zero again. And out here, remember the total charge enclosed out there is zero. And so there's no field out there either. So... The, that's the that's what the graph looks like. It's it's just got electric field in the region between A between A and B. Notice that that is um, shielding that this outer surface is shielding the electric field is not it's not allowing the electric field to go outside of it. Okay, one other thing about this, or right, let's just try another one just to see if you get the idea. I'm going to change, change it up a little bit, but here we have concentric shells, spherical shells. This is metal, just like the last time. We're going to change the R's. The R's are going to be a capital R, capital 2 R's, and capital 3 R. Those are all constants. And um, so if, and, and I'm going to tell you that the charge on the inside is Q, on this side, on this sphere is Q, and the charge on the, um, and the outer sphere is also Q. So they both have a charge Q. The net charge is Q on this outer sphere. Okay, so what if I were to ask you what the charge densities would be for the for the um, the inner wall and the outer wall? If I asked you what the charge density sigma will be on the inner wall and the outer wall. Okay, well let's figure this out. Okay, so look, um, if if I want to know the charge on the outer wall, or excuse me, this inner wall, then I'm going to put a Gaussian surface here. See that Gaussian surface? It's going around, it's spherical. And I already know what the net flux is through that Gaussian surface. Since this is in the metal, then when I do this, since that's zero, 
there is no net flux. That means that uh, that's zero, which means that Q enclosed by the Gaussian surface is zero. And so I know that the inside surface here has to be negative Q. That's the only way that the net charge in there can be zero. So what is the charge density on the inside? What's sigma inner? It's going to be the charge per area. So the negative Q over the area. Now the area is going to be um, 4 pi r squared, but r for the outer, for that inner surface is 2r. So I'm going to do 2r squared. So that's going to be um, negative Q over, let's see, 16 pi r squared. All right, what about um, the outer surface? What is the sigma for the outer surface? Well, um, if the net charge is Q, if I told you that the net charge is Q, and I know this is negative Q on the inside, well, the outside then must have a charge. In order to give it a negative, or a charge of positive Q, this part has a charge of positive Q. If the inside is negative Q, then the outer one must be 2Q. That's because um, the inner and the outer have to add up to the total. So Q total, Q net, equals Q inner plus Q outer. And so if that's the case, then the, if the inner is, I told you that the Q net is Q, and we know that the Q inner is negative Q, then if I want to get Q outer, Q outer, then um, bring this on the other side. It looks like Q outer is um, 2Q. See how that works? Incidentally, if you want to know what the um, electric field is way out here, um, it's no longer zero. In fact, um, let's let's figure it out. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Draw a Gaussian surface, this big, huge Gaussian surface, and apply Gauss's law. I'm going to apply Gauss's law in this little space here. So I'm finding the electric field out a, a far, you know, when you're when you're more than three r away. So the electric field will be the Q enclosed. Now the total Q enclosed is, um, this is Q and that's Q. So the total Q enclosed is 2Q. No matter which way you count it, there's a couple ways you can count it, but the total charge enclosed is 2Q over epsilon naught. Now um, the E out here is straight out, radially outward, as the DAs are also radially outward. So we can get rid of the dot product and why would we expect E to be any stronger here than here than here? That's just it. We wouldn't. And so the electric field is the same at all points on the Gaussian surface. So I pull out the E and I add up all the DAs. And when I add up all the DAs, I get that it's E time, um, times 4 pi little r squared. Now what is little r? Little r is the distance from here all the way out to the Gaussian sphere, to there. Okay, so if I bring that around then, it looks like E equals 2Q over 4 pi epsilon naught squared. All right, we're done with this. Thank you for listening. Bye.